today just going to run you through some design decisions behind the T-cell V2.1. So we're just, just for context, this is what it looks like. It has uh, four connectors on it. The four pin connector, that's for uh, grounded low voltage power and also the, the signal that gets sent off to indicate that there's a high voltage present in the tractive system. We have the tractive system measuring point split across two connectors. We just decided to split it across two connectors because we had a few question marks about whether it would be comp compliant with just one. I think it is, but um, yeah, we just stuck it like that. We also have the accumulator indicator light output here. So that's a, a lamp that's driven directly by the voltage on the tractive system that's local to the accumulator. The point there is that if you pull the accumulator out of the car and say the airs are welded shut, it's happened before, then you have a lamp on the accumulator to tell you that there is dangerous voltage present. So this is designed to fit in the accumulator uh, above the IND. That's what this cutout is for. Jumping over to the schematic, we'll start from the start with the power supply. We just have that four pin connector that gives us a polarity protected uh, 12 volt input, a little bit of filtering, and then we go through a isolated DC to DC converter to give us an isolated 12 volt in ground. I've separated ground power from ground. So this is the isolated ground that's local only to this board. The heart of the T-cell is just a comparator circuit, nothing too exotic, there's just a few implementation notes. So we'll start with the voltage reference, we generate a 3 volt reference off this 12 volt supply, so V ref is 3 volts, and we can just assume that that uh, 12 volts is accurate enough for this purpose. You could put in a, a Zener shunt, but it's not really necessary. We also have the high voltage coming in and going through a scaling voltage divider. Uh, it's worth noting that because high voltage is split across two plugs, we put uh, high voltage positive on pin 1 of a plug and high voltage po negative on pin 2 of a plug. This means that if you swap the plugs accidentally, you don't break everything. It just doesn't work. So we've got, um, let's say, 160 volts max across here. This could actually handle way more, but at the moment our accumulated voltage is 160 volts. We go through a fuse and a divide by 20 voltage divider. So that means that when the high voltage in is 60 volts, the high voltage out is 3 volts, and that matches the 3 volt reference that we created. Uh, we just have a shunt, like a a protection diode here that means that V in can never get above 12 volts. I didn't actually populate this on the board, it was just a provision. I thought it might be nice to have just in case, but that's not populated for comp. And then we come to the, the actual comparator circuit. So this is an LM311. There's a bit of input filtering that's just recommended by the data sheet to stop the output noise coupling to the input and causing oscillation and a little bit of hysteresis uh, on the feedback path. Now I forget what direction the output takes, so let's work it out together. We have 3 volts at V ref, and that's on the non-inverting input, which means that the output is high if the non-inverting input is greater than the inverting input. So when there's no voltage present here, the output is high. So high means basically safe and then when this voltage climbs the inverting input climbs above the non-inverting input which sends the output low so basically at this node high means safe and low means unsafe that actually makes this a failed danger circuit if this component uh, is is damaged or destroyed or removed this uh, node will naturally float high through the pull-up resistor, making it unsafe, but so be it. So when this is, let's say, high, that means, I think, safe. Yep, high safe. This charges the gate of a N-channel MOSFET, so this MOSFET turns on. So when we have a, uh, a safe condition, this MOSFET is conducting, and we get current flowing through a resistor, through an optocoupler, a little indicator LED and to ground. So this optocoupler turns on and that pulls this isolated V high output to ground. So that means this V high uh, signal is exactly what it says. If this is pulled up external to the board, then it's pulled down whenever there's a safe voltage present and it floats high whenever a dangerous voltage is present. Assuming there's a pull-up resistor 
somewhere on wherever this signal goes and there is. So we have a high voltage here which turns this transistor on. Now because we have another n-channel MOSFET connected directly to the drain, when this transistor is conducting it's basically connected to ground. So this node voltage is at ground which means that this transistor is off. But when the output of the comparator is pulled low this transistor pulls off, so it's an open circuit, and that means that we have 12 volts going through, we lose a volt through here, we lose two volts through here, so you've got about nine volts at this node when Q1 is turned off, which means that this transistor turns on, and we just get a little uh, LED indicator indicating V high. So this is just a, a neat way to make one, one digital signal have two complementary outputs. You can just chain these MOSFETs together to have a complementary action of each MOSFET. So we have a, a local V low and V high indicator on our board just to give us a little bit of feedback during commissioning. So that's really the meat and potatoes of the T cell. This last part up here is the accumulator indicator light circuit. So the input for that is tapped straight off the positive HV line just after the fuse through a protection diode, and then all we have are two, uh, I guess, cascaded voltage regulators. So these are adjustable high voltage linear voltage regulators, and this first one regulates to 48 volts, and then the second one regulates to 12 volts. That just keeps power dissipation between them kind of manageable. Those voltages are set by these resistor pairs, and that's a pretty standard linear voltage regulator uh, formula. So the whole point behind this design didn't really work out, uh, but it was relying on the dropout voltage of the regulator. The idea being that it should only work when the input voltage is 12 volts or more higher than the output voltage. So if the output voltage is 48 volts, then this regulator should only work when the input voltage is 60 volts. And hey, that's what we want our AIL to switch at. In reality though, the dropout voltage isn't a hard edge, so what you actually get is a little bit of current flow anyway. But this output is intended to connect to just a 12 volt automotive LED that you can get from like JCAR or wherever, with a provisional uh, series resistor just to limit the current through that LED. You want to keep this current small to around 2.5 or even 3 milliamps, just to keep heat dissipation in these parts manageable. And, you know, I think that's it. I think I've covered all the major things. If we just jump over to the PCB, uh, just to see if anything hits me, if anything, any inspiration leaps out. Yes, uh, as, as usual, you should have like a big indicator to separate visually your GLV and tractive system. And the only parts bridging that line are a isolated DC to DC power supply and the optocoupler. We've got a big old fuse on the input. Uh, that's like a, a M205 ceramic fuse that's a solder in type, so it has wire ends. And they these holes are chosen so that basically when you bend the leads of the fuse, it slides right on. And I've even put some heat shrink around that. There should be a picture of that within this article as well. But there you have it. I think that's mm, basically all the design justification for the T-cell. Hope that clears things up.